A very good morning, brothers and sisters. And we welcome you to, uh, to Desert Stream this morning and joining us for this morning's worship. And uh, we're glad that you can be with us. Uh, please stand with me as we prepare ourselves for this morning's worship. As we come into the Lord's presence, we want to prepare ourselves to enter into His holy presence to, in order that our hearts and our minds, Lord, are ready to worship Him. Our hearts and our minds and our souls are ready to receive His Word into our life. Come to His courts with praise on our lips Our hearts and our minds and our souls worship Him Lifting our hands, joining the angels above, declaring, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy is the Lord. sisters, the Lord be with you. I was glad when they say unto me, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Shout for joy to the Almighty Saviour. God is spirit. 
We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now join our hearts together to pray the collect for this morning. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus has given us that pardon. Shall we do that? Can we do that? Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the wildest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon.
us by your blood so that we can enter in the presence of our Father this morning to sit to open our hearts to receive his words for us this morning Lord we thank you for this time of worship we commit the rest of the time into your hands we pray and ask all this in your mighty name Lord Jesus Amen, Amen. Brothers and sisters please be seated Thank you, worship team. Once again, a very good morning, brothers and sisters. We're glad that you can be with us uh, in Desert Stream this morning, and all of you. And uh, right now, before we pass the time to Pastor Margaret, I'd like to invite the children uh, to join Yongging and her team for the children worship upstairs. This morning, we are glad that we can have uh, Pastor Margaret, who will be sharing the word with us. Let us uh, welcome her up here. Let's give her a warm <laughs> round of applause as we welcome Pastor Margaret. Thank you very much, Leonard. Good morning, everyone. So wonderful to see all of you here this morning. Have you had breakfast? It's a dangerous question to ask. <laughs> Me too, I haven't. <laughs> but how about we start with this? Chinese New Year is coming up. What are you looking forward to eat? I'll share with your neighbour. What are you looking forward to eat? Chicken. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that as well. With the ginger and soya sauce and a nice bowl of soup. Oh, okay. What are you thinking to eat? You... you Talk to your friends. What are you thinking to eat? Kyung Yuk. Kyung Yuk. Yeah. Praise the Lord. For the Lord has given us good food. Amen. And this morning, this is what we want to do is to feast on the Word of God. Yeah, feast. On the word of God as I mentioned before you know we lived a crossed over life what we mean crossed over for those who of us you know we have chosen Jesus to be our God to be our Savior to be our Lord we are we have crossed over in our spirit we have crossed over and the Lord is inviting us every day to feast on what he has prepared for us so that's what we're gonna do this morning amen okay let's pray let's pray Father, we are so thankful because you love us with an everlasting love. And every day is an opportunity, it's an invitation, Lord, to enjoy that. You are inviting us every day. You are calling us by our name. You are calling us by our name and say, come, come, come to me, come to me. I want to love you. I want to show my love to you. Come to me. Every day is this invitation to experience your love in a deeper measure. And Lord, this is our heart's desire this morning is that we will encounter you even more today. And we pray for all our children too 
that they will encounter you personally as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God has prepared, of course, every day, I believe that God has prepared something good for us. Amen. As we have read, you know, at the beginning of this year, Psalm 23, that the goodness and mercy of God, it pursues us. It's pursuing you. Is it pursuing you? Do you feel it this year? Something has changed. Something has changed in my life as well. I can see it. Something different that has never happened before has happened. And I know that God is pursuing us. God is pursuing us. So this morning, my I titled my past message, Who is my father? Who is my father? It's not that we don't know who is our father. You know, who is it that we want to call to be our father? But in our hearts, to experience that father. Father. The beginning of the year, we, take, we receive and believe and accept Jesus. We believe and accept God as our shepherd. Today, are we believing and receiving God as our Father? That's the heart of God for us. Amen? And, and so, when we go through this morning, let it not just come here, but let it go here and here in our spirit. Let the Lord minister to us and receive His feast for us this morning. I'm going to start off with a picture, a drawing that was given to me by a friend when she was praying for me. She saw this picture and, and at the time, I was feeling like, oh, I wasn't feeling too good about myself. I was going through some difficulty, uh, thinking and having doubts. Can you see the picture? Yeah. Can you see the ship? Okay. So she, she drew what was in her mind. She quickly drew it out, you know, to express what is it that the Lord is trying to say to me. And receive it for yourself as well. Now this morning, I believe God wants to bless all of us with these words. It says here, Come into the Father's presence because He knows His sheep. The Father knows us. Resist the darkness with His light. Because he always welcomes us with a joyful heart, regardless of where we are in our journey with him. He always welcomes us with a joyful heart. Isn't that a blessing to know? And then sometimes we may go through difficulties and say, oh, I don't think God is so happy to see me today, man. My sour face and, <laughs> and complaining words. But God says he is joyful. He has a joyful heart to welcome us into His presence as He is welcoming us even this day. Amen? Today we're going to read quite a few passages, but I pray, we pray that the passages will speak to us. You know, we may be repeating the same passage, but from a different version, but let the passage, the Word of God, just speak to us and receive it into our spirit. I'm going to start off this morning with Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. Yeah, we're going to read together with Amplified uh, Version, the classic version. Let's read, but take it easy, relax, okay? So we can uh, digest or swallow the word. Let's read together. May blessing, praise, laudation and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual given by the Holy Spirit, blessing in the heavenly realm. Mm, okay, first cause. <laughs> Second cause. Even as in His love, He chose us, actually picked us out for Himself as His own in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for Him, and blameless in His sight, even above reproach before Him in love. Wow, okay. Next one. For He foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us, to be adopted, 
revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and it was his kind intent so that we might be to the praise and the commendation of his glorious grace favor and mercy which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved man ah ian is looking he is digesting too hi baby ian hi okay next one okay next one ian yeah let's do it in him we have redemption deliverance and salvation through his blood the remission, forgiveness of our offences, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of His gracious favour, which He lavished upon us every kind of wisdom and understanding, practical insight and prudence, making known to us the mystery secret of his will of his plan of his purpose and it is in accordance with good pleasure his merciful intention which he had previously purposed and set forth in him he planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on the earth. Wow, that's a big chunk. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next one. In him, we also were made God's heritage portion and we obtain an inheritance for we had been foreordained chosen appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will so that we who first hope in Christ, who first put our confidence in Him, have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of His glory. Amen. In Him, you also who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings gospel of your salvation, and have believed in and adhered to and relied on Him, and will stand with the seal of the long-promised Holy Spirit. That Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance, the first fruits, the pledge and foretaste, the down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of His glory. Amen. Do you feel a bit full now? Those of you, you haven't had breakfast? <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So this morning, we want to see who is our father. Even from the passage that we have read, we can see the nature of God. We can see his heart, his love, his kindness, generous, and so willing to save us, so willing to redeem us. And in the end also, he gave up his one and only son for us. We see his heart. This is our father. And with this this morning is that the Lord has shown us that He has given us what we truly need. What we say, the shepherds say, He has given us and therefore we lack nothing. Yeah, we lack nothing. And God gave us three areas that I just want to share briefly with us this morning is that God gave us a sense of belonging. Secondly, he gave us a sense of security. Thirdly, he gave us a sense of purpose and destiny. Okay, you got that? Yeah. So God has given us, he has given us, but sometimes we may feel that we have not experienced it or we are not experiencing it in greater measure or we experience it a little bit, but then we got a bit lost. We are unsure. But today, the Lord wants to affirm us and today we will pray about it as well, together as a body of Christ. Not just for our individual needs, but for our family and for our nation. Okay, so firstly, God gave us a sense of belonging. All of us want to feel belong, right? 
We want to feel that we belong to a family. We want to feel that we belong to a team. We want to feel that we belong to a church. And what God gives us also is our identity as a child of God. Okay, hold on to that. Okay, I belong to God, the Father. He is my Father. I am a child of God. Is that just in our head or is that an experience that we are having at this time? Am I? Do I really believe that I am a child of God? And by faith we believe, isn't it? Yeah, by faith, like we receive our salvation. We, by faith, we believe that we have received Jesus. And so by faith, we believe in the word of God. Then when we believe in Jesus, we become the children of God. We believe it by faith. And I, I feel so encouraged because like Abraham, he's, he, he was a man, you know, they call him the father of faith. But why? Did not he has his doubt and things like that. But he, when God spoke to him, he took it, I believe. I will have, you know, many descendants. I believed. I believed. Do you believe? Don't think about all the reason or why I'm I'm not qualified to be a child of God. Uh, or I don't understand everything the Bible says. So I'm not sure whether I'm a child of God. But by faith, believe it, receive it. I am the Son of God. I am a child of God. I belong. And believe and receive that we are loved. Believed and receive that we are wanted. Believed and receive that we are accepted. Okay, hold on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Yeah, hold on to that. Because maybe some of us, we are feeling, you know, there are words that are coming to us. Oh, no, you're not. No, remember what somebody say? You don't belong here. Or you're not wanted. You are a mistake. Maybe some words, you know, voices are coming to us. But hold on by faith what God is saying to us. Okay, let us look at uh, passages but from a different translation. Okay, we are accepted, we are loved and wanted. Okay, so just now we read from the uh, Amplified Version. Let's read from another version. Uh, Okay, let's read for another version. The second Okay. Is that okay? The next. Okay, I'll read from there. Uh, next one. Okay, let's read from this one. Praise be to God for giving us through Christ every possible spiritual benefit as citizens of heaven. For consider what He has done before the foundation of the world. He chose us to become in Christ His holy and blameless children living within His constant care. He planned in His purpose of love that we should be adopted as his own children through Jesus Christ that we might learn to praise that glorious generosity of his which was made us welcome in the everlasting love he bears towards the son so we can see from this passage is that he loves us he calls us to be in Christ his holy and blameless children and living in his constant care Hold on to that. Believe that. He constantly care. Constantly care. Constantly cares for us. And I was in Joshua chapter one, it says that you know God is telling Joshua, meditate. A lot of times we read the scripture, we just read one through, you know, like sitting in a spot car and speeding through <laughs> the scripture. Okay, I'm not asking you to sit in the ukwitala, okay? <laughs> the Volkswagen. But I, I do encourage us, chew on it. What does it mean that God gives us, you know, He constantly care for you? What does it mean for you 
in your situation, in your context. See, whatever that we are thinking about, our concern, whatever that we are worried, He constantly cares. You know, whether we make it today, whether we are able to do ourselves, or whether we are able to help our children today, uh, whether we'll be able to do our work, whether we'll be able to relate with people, relate with Him, He constantly cares. Whether we'll be able to solve the problems that we face, He constantly cares. Whether we're able to revise well, whether we get the best teachers, or whether our teachers are able to help us, you know, or our friends, He constantly cares. And therefore, we can have that, you know, confidence. My Father constantly cares for me. We are holy and blameless, and it is His desire, His love, and His planning that we are adopted. Okay, let's read another translation. How blessed is God, and what a blessing He is. He's the Father of our Master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in Him. Long before He laid down earth's foundation, He had us in mind, has settled on us as the focus of His love, to be made whole and holy by His love. Long, long ago, He decided to adopt us into His family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure He took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into celebration of His lavish gift-giving by the hand of His beloved Son. Hallelujah! I'm just going to pick on, highlight on one point, is that it is His desire to love us and it is His desire to make us whole. Whole, one chair. Total. Any part of us that is broken, any part of us that is missing, any part of us that has been stolen by the enemy, destroyed by the enemy, the Lord is saying He wants to make us whole. It is His desire for us. Our Father wants to make us whole. Amen. Hold on to it. Chew on it. Okay. Like you are we are pretending we are eating at Chinese New Year dinner. Okay. <laughs> New Year Eve dinner. Okay. Chew upon it. He wants to make us whole. It is his desire. By faith, believe, receive, and enjoy that. So we know he loved us. He wanted us. He accepted us. He has made us very unique, different. Yeah, giftings, different personality, different, but he accepts. He wanted us. We are already planned in his mind long, long, long time ago. He wants us. Amen? Okay, right. Secondly, he gives us a sense of security. Okay, how, how in a sense of security? Okay, we'll quickly read again the Amplified Version. Okay, I say the protection and provision. Okay, in him, we have redemption, deliverance and salvation through his blood. The remission, forgiveness of our offences, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the riches and generosity of His gracious favour, which He lavished upon us in every kind of wisdom and understanding, practical insight and prudence, making known to us the mystery, secret of His will, of His plan, of His purpose, and it is this. According with his good pleasure, his merciful intention, which he had previously purposed and set forth in him, he planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up, consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on the earth. I'm going to read two different translations again. That, okay, it is true the Son at the cost of his own blood that we are redeemed, we are freely forgiven through that full and generous grace which has overflowed in our lives and opened our eyes to the truth. Okay, for God has allowed us to know the secret of His plan and it is this, He purposes in His sovereign will that all human history shall be consummated in Christ, that everything that exists in heaven and earth shall find its perfection and fulfillment in Him. A next translation 
At the cost of Jesus' blood, we are redeemed. We are freely forgiven, what the passage said just now. And the next one, because of the sacrifice of Messiah, His blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are free people, free of penalties and punishment, chopped up by our misdeeds. And not just barely free, abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such great delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and sum up in him, everything in the deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. God knows what is going on and he has a plan for us. And furthermore, you know, that kind of provision and that kind of protection, it comes, you know, because of his son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and by his blood and when we come to the Lord Jesus and make him the Lord of our lives we have this sense of security we have this sense of protection and provision not just physical provision but spiritual provision as well and not only that but for the provision of our soul and this is what I I want to say is that you know we may think provision very much about financial and things like that sure those are very important. But what do we truly need? What kind of security do we truly need? When I was uh, going through this, I, I remember last time when I was a teenager, uh, yeah, you know, every Saturday is our uh, housework day, okay? You know, as students, you will get out at 5.30, 5 o'clock, Monday to Friday, and Saturday it will be a day that Oh, you just want to lay in bed. So we'll be lying down in bed and my dad will come, you know, 8 o'clock. Very late already, get out. <laughs> so we all need to get out, get out. Okay, and start doing our housework, all right? So one day, one Saturday, I was wiping the cabinet. And that is what I always do. I wipe and wipe and wipe and oh, accidentally, I knocked one of the frames, photo frame, and it broke. I said, oh dear. Some more is a picture of my parents, you know, on their wedding day. Oh, it fell. Oh, I was so full of fear. I was so fearful. It's just a photo frame. But I was expecting my dad is going to really have a go at me, you know. I was really expecting, I was like, oh my goodness, it's so loud. And he came and he said, it's okay. Wow. That's what I mean, security, <laughs> protection and provision from, uh, provided for me forgiveness, you know, that I may receive forgiveness. <clears throat> provided for me that protection uh, at that time when I needed to be protected. And I feel secure at that time and say, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. Okay, I need to move on to the next one. Last but not the least, I'm sure there's some more, you know, the Lord bless us. Oh, sorry, I haven't finished. Another provision that the Lord gave us, as we have read, uh, I'll just quickly say it, is the Holy Spirit. The provision that God gave us, His Spirit with us. His Spirit, like some passages will say that it's like an engagement ring of what is to come. And not only that, His Holy Spirit with us is His presence with us to help us. And so, we have more than enough. We have every spiritual blessing. And we have God Himself. And during this week, I was at ATI, you know, helping the students with this subject. And in the book, it's, it's shared about something that they mentioned about the stages of relationship with God. There are stages of relationship with God. He said the first stage, you know, when we get to know God, we talk to God. God, this is what I, this is what, this is what, God, 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 God. <laughs> Secondly, then you start talking with God. Uh, okay, hi, hi, God. <laughs> uh, okay, then you start, you know, with God. And as your relationship grows, you know, you, thirdly, you start to listen. Uh, you begin to listen, spend a bit more time listening to the Lord. So, so it's a more two-way 
relationship. And lastly, it says that at the end, uh, not at the end, but I mean at a, another stage of our relationship with the Lord, is what they call we be with God. Being with God. And I think it happens with us as well when we have a good friend, you know, or with our spouse. Sometimes we don't have to say anything. We just be with each other. And, and it's something like that. So he, he was saying that, you know, in our relationship, sometimes, you know, with God, it's, it's just asking, 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 please, 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 do, do, do this and things like that. But it, it develops, it develops, it develops. Then it became, oh God, what is on your heart? Oh, how do you see this situation? What are you trying to tell me? And slowly, sometimes we don't even have to say anything. We're just enjoying being with the person. We have that. We have God. We have God with us, in us, for us. He's not against us. God with us. Treasure what the Lord has already given to us. Hold on to it. Go deeper, my friends. Go deeper. Lastly, He gave us a sense of purpose and destiny. Okay? Um, let's, do, let's do the Passion Translation. Yeah, let's do the Passion Translation for verse 11, okay? The one verse 11. Through our union with Christ, we too have been claimed by God as His own inheritance. Before we were even born, He gave us our destiny that He would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in His heart. The next one, verse uh, 2 verse 10. We become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given uh, each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works that we would do to fulfill it. So he, we become his poetry or we become his workmanship or we become his masterpiece. And he has a plan for us already in advance concerning our destiny. And in Him, we will find, we discover that. So friends, today, the Lord is encouraging us. He is our Father. He constantly cared. He has provided everything for us. Our part, believe it, Believe it, take hold of it. Believe it, take hold of it. Accept it, live it. Because if we are still unsure of who our Father is and how our Father sees us, our identity is unsure, our destiny will be affected as well. Our soul will not prosper. And when our soul does not prosper, we are not able to prosper as the Lord has destined for each one of us to prosper. It's God's heart for all of us to prosper even more, no matter how old you are, how young, how old, there is still that part that God wants to see fulfilled. That is His purpose for each and every one of us. Amen. 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 Okay. Done with the eating? <laughs> okay. Now is the dessert time. Uh, we say it so much. And now <laughs> we all eat the sweetness of God by praying. Receive the sweetness of God by praying. Whatever bitterness that has happened in our lives, whatever that is bitter, because dessert, my dessert must be sweet one, right? Okay? Sweet one, right? Sweet, sweet? <laughs> this one must be sweet, right? Not bitter, right? Okay? <laughs> All right. Okay, so the, this part, we will pray. And I want to invite all of us to pray. You may not know how to pray about it, but it's okay. If you agree in your heart and this is what you want and you desire, this is what we want to do, this second part. 
is that we will pray and ask the Lord, God, if we feel that in our hearts, right, you know, sometimes you have this nagging feeling that has been going on for years. You feel that you are not blessed. You feel that you are cursed. And you feel that every time you to go forward, <laughs> there's so many things that are stopping. Or you, you do, you did. And then it pull back and pull back and pull back and pull back. I feel that God is encouraging us this morning. Let us pray about our identity. Okay? Let's pray about our identity. Let us place our identity in the Lord. And whatever has happened in the past, whether in regards to us personally or whether in regards to our ancestors, our father and mother's side, whether their identity has been cursed or whether we have cursed other people's identity, hallelujah, today is the day to be free from this. Amen? And we're going to pray for our nation as well and our people group. Whatever I, what have been, have been done that has been cursing us, we don't want that anymore. We are choosing a new beginning. We are choosing to enjoy the total abundant freedom that the Lord has given to us. I'm going to take it. Today is the day I'm going to take it. How about that? Firstly, to forgive. Forgive those who have cursed us, cursed our identity. And forgive those who have cursed our family all the way down, now father and mother side, all the way down to Adam and Eve. But forgive them. Secondly, we repent. If we have cursed others' identity or our forebears have cursed people's identity, right? We're going to cut this off from our hearts. Eh? No more. Enough is enough. Today is the day of freedom. So... Shall I invite all of us to pray? Yeah? By faith, believe. Okay, you can do that. Uh, as parents, we can do that. You know, we are doing... And, and if you test your heart's desire, you, this year, the start of the year, Lord, I, I want to... If this is in your heart, that means it's important. And I want to be free. You know, I want my identity to be free from the work of darkness that I'll be fully clothed and fully confident in my... Co- Identity in the Lord and my destiny, my sense of security and belonging in the Lord. I'm so confident. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. I'll just uh, bring us in, in prayer. I pray and give, and, and this today, if there's any one of us here or when you're watching the, those of us who are watching the recording, and if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord, and today you say, I want, I want this Jesus. I want this Jesus who, who paid the price on the cross. I want this Jesus through Him, in Him. There is so much that the Father wants to bless me with. I want Jesus. And if that is you, you have never said that to Jesus, you can just raise your hand to Jesus and say, Jesus, I want you. I want you to be my God, my Lord. I want to believe in you to be my Savior. I believe in you. Have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. I come to you and I believe that when I ask and I believe that I am accepted by you and I've come into your kingdom when I believe and rely in you. And now I am a child of God. I am the son of my father, the daughter of my father. Amen. So let's pray. Father, let's forgive. You want us to forgive those who have cursed us. We may not know who they are. Some of us, we may remember the words that have been spoken that have cursed who we are, saying that you're not good enough. You're a mistake. I don't want you. I don't like you. You are a burden to me. I wish you are like your brother. I wish you are like your sister. You're not good enough. The result is bad. Do better. If you do this, then you are good. If you don't do this, you are a bad boy. You're a bad girl. God, only you know. Only you know. Words that have cursed our identity. Father, today we choose to forgive those who have cursed us, 
we willingly forgive. And if you find it hard to forgive, ask God. God, help me to forgive. I am willing, but I find it difficult. It's okay. God understands. He will help us. But I am willing. God, we are also willing to forgive those who have cursed our ancestors. Whether in actions, whether in the way they look at them, whether in the words or the tone of their voice, Lord, we choose to forgive. Because things that happen like that has traumatized the souls of our ancestors, the spirits, their own human spirit as well. And God, it has traumatized us as well, shaken in our inner core, and we do not understand. But God, today we are willing to forgive. We are willing to forgive. Even as a nation, a people group here in Malaysia, we choose to forgive those who have cursed us, our people group. Choose those to forgive those who have cursed Sabah, those who have cursed Malaysia. We choose to forgive. We choose to forgive. Father God, thank you. We choose to forgive. Father, we also pray that you forgive us when we ourselves have cursed others' identity, we ask that you forgive us. When we have not said what you would say, is that we say things that have hurt, cursing them that they are not able to prosper. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask that you forgive our ancestors as well for cursing other people. Forgive us as a people group for cursing others, as Sabahan, as Malaysian, for cursing other people, cursing their identity. God, we ask for your forgiveness. Father, right now we pray that you will cleanse us we receive your forgiveness. We receive your forgiveness. We rest secure in your forgiveness and love for us. We ask that you cleanse us and cut off all these curses. We thank you that you have paid the price for all these curses, Lord, to be dissolved from our life, from our family line, from affecting our children as well. Next generation, Lord, we thank you. We receive it. We pray that you cleanse us, cleanse us, cleanse us, Lord, from all these accusations coming against us. We break it in Jesus' name and all these curses be broken from our hearts, from our soul in Jesus' name. And Lord, we speak blessing. We speak blessing, Lord, to those we have forgiven, Lord, to those we have hurt as well. Lord, we speak blessing to their lives, Lord, and we speak blessing to our Lord, our own heart, our own life. We speak blessing that we are blessed in Christ Jesus. That we are blessed in Christ Jesus. We are blessed. We receive it. We receive it in Jesus' name. We receive it in Jesus' name. Father, in any way that we have dishonored our parents, in any way that we have dishonored our leaders, in any way that we have judged our parents or leaders or, or aunties and uncles and those who are in authority, God, we ask for your forgiveness right now. In any way that we have dishonored them, we have judged them, Lord, because of the pain that we have experienced, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We forgive them also, Lord, for dishonoring us or judging us. Lord, we also forgive. Lord, we also choose to forgive. And we ask that, Lord, you, you cleanse us with your blood. You set us apart, Lord, by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And that, Lord, you, all these curses be dissolved and all these accusation be stopped right now in Jesus' name. And the release, Lord, what has been delayed, what has been stolen, 
killed, destroyed. Lord, we pray and speak restoration right now in Jesus' name. We speak restoration. We speak healing to every part that is broken, is made whole right now according to the word of God. By your love, we are made whole. We speak that right now in Jesus' name. It's been made whole. And what has been stolen, Lord, has been, will be restored. We speak restoration right now in Jesus' name. Much better than what has been lost. Greater beyond what we could ever imagine. Be restored back to your people, Lord. Be restored back to your children. Lord, adjust us back to you. What is out of alignment in our soul and our spirit, in our, even in our physical body, restore us back to your divine purposes. Lord, we speak against any delay, any delay to your purposes and destiny for us, to what you have already prepared for us. We break that in Jesus' name. We align back to your timing. To the timing of God, I speak that into our hearts, that we are aligned back to God's timing for each and every one of us. We will not miss His timing and we will be at the right place at the right time with the right people. For the glory of the name of our Father, for His own glory, we say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We give thanks to God for that. Believed and accept. The Lord has done something in our hearts. He has shifted our life and brought us back in alignment to what He has prepared for us. Amen. Amen. Shall we respond with this song? Yeah. Who you say I am. And we will close later. Well, yeah, let's sing this. What, what the Father say, who we are. And then we will pray. Okay. Praise God. You enjoyed your dessert? Okay. Drink some wine now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Lord.
sermon I was reading through it and uh, I felt that the Lord is indeed prompted a lot of things that is uh, being still in my heart concerning this whole topic and uh, I came in a little bit late because I was sending out a message to to a church whom we are going to visit in February we're going to conduct a uh, weekend course. And it was this passage that I sent out is concerning the Father's blessing. And I told the pastor, I said, uh, this is, uh, I felt that this is what the Lord is wanting to, to give it to us. And I want to read out, I want to declare the blessing of um, of Isaac upon Jacob it was meant for Esau the firstborn but it was declared upon Jacob today we heard the sharing of the word whatever that happened in the past how, however our earthly father was to us our heavenly father is quite different from our earthly father it may be a problem for us 
to address God as Father because of our earthly father. What they've said, what they've done, what they did not say, what they did not do. But today, it's fair that the Lord is wanting us to focus on Him. Ephesians chapter 3. He's a different Father. Completely different. Out of our expectation. Beyond our imagination. He's awesome. He's accepting. He's protecting. He is giving purposes in our life. That's who He is. That's who we are. May I bless you with the blessing of the Father on the firstborn. You are the firstborn. You know what's so special about the firstborn? You have a double portion of God's blessing. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine, let peoples serve you and nations, wherever you may be, bow down to you. Be master over your brethren. Be the first among equal. Let your mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. Receive this, the blessing of the Father upon your life. The heart of the Father for you this day, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for us this day is that we might be blessed. No condition, no reason. Simply because we are His children and we belong to Him. That's who we are. And therefore, live as who God say you are. Live it out. Lord, we pray today as we receive this blessing of the Father from you. May our lives, O oh God, may the way that we live, the way that we think, the way that we act, the attitude that we hold, the words that we speak to others, truly reflect of who you say we are. The precious one, the accepted one, the blessed one, the loved one, the protected one, the purposeful one, the one being provided for, who lacks nothing for your goodness and mercy shall pursue us, running after us, overflowing all the days of our life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.